Okay, we're going to go through the process of flashing the OS to SD card and getting it configured properly. So first you're going to start with choosing um, the OS. And in our case, um, we're going to want to choose Raspberry Pi OS Other and uh, we'll select the Pi OS Lite 32-bit. Then we'll choose our SD card. Uh, I have a 64 gig card installed right now, so I'm going to select that. And then we'll go down to this little cog icon and we'll configure the OS directly. So for us right now, we're going to um, go ahead and select the host name. Um, you might want to make this something like PyFire. Um, to help you find this after you get it set up, uh, you should be able to just type into your browser http colon slash slash pyfire.local and it should be able to find it. Uh, next you'll want to enable SSH. Uh, you'll want to use your password authentic authentication. Um, and you can go ahead and uh, type in a password here. And then uh, you want to configure your wireless LAN device. Um, so ensure that you um, type in the right SSID uh, and password for that. So I think I have mine pre-configured already. I'll just make sure. Um, then you'll want to select your wireless LAN country. Uh, I live in the United States, so I'm going to go ahead and set that up. Um, but first, I'm going to set the locale settings. So uh, right now it's set to Los Angeles, which is uh, correct for, for uh, my time zone, so leave that. And the US keyboard layout is correct. Um, and then um, I will go ahead and make this selection and continue. Okay, and now we're ready to write, so we just click on the Write button. Okay, now the card is finished writing, so we can remove it from the uh, system and put it into the Raspberry Pi and get it booted up. Okay, and now we're at the step where uh, it's time to go and install uh, PyFire directly from the command prompt. Um, so using the instructions, you can copy and paste the command from your computer. Um, so basically copy and paste this curl command uh, go to your favorite uh, SSH client. Um, in my case, I'm using a uh, Windows subsystem for Linux. Um, uh, a lot of times I use Linux at home, um, but if you're using Windows, you can use something like PuTTY to SSH in. Um, anyway, from here, we're going to go ahead and type SSH, uh, pi, which is the username, at the IP address 192.168.10.147. Um, and this is just the IP address that I know is assigned to the, the new Pi that I just created. Um, but you may need to, to go and find out uh, what the IP address is uh, for yours. So add the fingerprint. Enter the password that I entered before. Uh, and now we're ready to get started with the installation. So we're going to copy paste the command that I mentioned previously and press enter. Now this will start up the installer and uh, from this point on um, this uh, will start to do um, or copy the software or update the software on uh, the SD card so it may take some time and I may fast forward through this.
Okay, at this point, um, you're going to want to um, choose whether or not you uh, install the uh, web UI for Supervisor uh, for debugging any issues that you might have with the system. I think it's highly, highly recommended to go this route. Um, so I'd always recommend this unless you have some serious security concerns or something like that. I would definitely do this. Um, so select uh, enable. Select a uh, username. I'm just going to go with user and password. Select the simple password. All right. So now you configured this. Uh, anytime you want to go to um, the supervisor web UI, you can enter this IP address, uh, your IP address, and the port 9001 at the end. Enter your username and password, and you should have uh, access to see what's running. Okay, and that's really all there is to this step. Uh, once we're completed, uh, we'll go ahead and do a reboot and follow through the rest of the configuration. Okay, now that we have uh, the first step in the installation done, we should be able to access the web user interface directly and configure uh, to finish the installation. So go to your browser of choice and type in um, HTTP um, highfire.local. Okay, and here we are. We're at the configuration wizard, um, and we can walk through the different configuration steps to complete the installation. So first tab is going to be the uh, platform module tab. This is where we select what platform you're using. Um, it's really simple for uh, users of the Pi Fire, um, sorry, the, the Raspberry Pi Zero W. Um, you can just select the uh, standard option here. Uh, for prototype and testing um, on a, a PC, um, you can select the prototype module, um, but we're just going to select the, the standard. Uh, make sure you select uh, whether or not you have active high or active low uh, relays for the platform. Um, I've got active low on mine, so I'm going to go ahead and select that. Click next. And then on to uh, the input module, the probes input module. Um, standard is the ADS 1115 um, module for, um, for, for temperatures. Um, for this particular demo, um, I don't have any hardware hooked up, so I'm just going to select prototype. Um, and I'm in the United States, so we still use Fahrenheit, so I'm going to keep this selected there. But if you are in a place or that uses Celsius or want to use Celsius, you can select it here to get it set up initially. Okay, we'll go ahead and click next. Uh, next, you can select your display module and input type. Um, by default, we have the ILA 9341 TFT screen with a three button board input. But you can select from a lot of different options here in the drop down. Um, Again, since I don't have anything connected to this one, I'm going to go ahead and select the prototype module uh, and, and continue. Uh, but if I was using uh, something with button input, um, then you can choose whether or not you have pull-ups or pull-downs on your button level down here, um, which is important depending on what design you d decided to choose. Um, so again, I'm going to go back to prototype. And then for the hopper level sensor, if you have one installed, uh, something like the uh, VL53L0X time of flight sensor, uh, you would select that here. Uh, and again, I don't have anything in, uh, connected to mine, so I'm going to go ahead and select prototype. Click next. Uh, here, just review what you have um, selected for the configuration, uh, and then you're ready to confirm and install. So I'm going to go ahead and click there, and this may take a little while, but we'll fast forward through that.
And congratulations, we're back to the dashboard and we're ready to get started.